So last week we did a video on the 25 different types of mushrooms that are grown around the world for both food and medicine. And we got a number of comments saying that we actually missed some of your favorite mushrooms. But this was totally done on purpose. You see, last week's video was done on mushrooms that can be cultivated, meaning growers have actually found reliable methods to produce these mushrooms on a commercial scale. But there are a whole bunch of amazing mushrooms that have so far evaded our attempts at cultivation. These mushrooms are much harder, if not impossible, to actually grow on purpose. And that's why some of the most popular and beloved mushrooms in the world still need to be wild harvested. But you might be wondering, why are some mushrooms so hard to grow? Well, mushrooms can be broken down into three broad categories. We have saprophytic fungi, parasitic fungi, and mycorrhizal fungi. The first group, the saprophytic fungi, are mushrooms that grow on dead or dying matter. They release enzymes that can break down this dead matter like wood chips, straw, or mulch. Mimicking this natural process is pretty easy to do, which is why most mushrooms that are cultivated around the world, like oysters, shiitake, button mushrooms, or enoki, these are all saprophytic fungi. The second group, the parasitic fungi, is just what it sounds like. These are mushrooms that attack living organisms. This ecology makes them much more difficult to cultivate. Parasitic fungi are mushrooms like Cordyceps sinensis, which attack ghost moths, and honey mushrooms, which attack living trees. The third group, mycorrhizal fungi, are mushrooms that grow by forming a symbiotic relationship with other plants. This relationship can get pretty complicated, but put simply, this works because of an exchange between the roots of the tree and the mushroom mycelium. The mushroom provides the tree with water and nutrients and in exchange receives carbohydrates that it needs to grow from the tree. These relationships are often complex and not yet totally understood, making cultivation of mycorrhizal fungi very difficult to do. Unfortunately, many of the best gourmet mushrooms in the world are mycorrhizal and can't yet be cultivated at scale the same way we cultivate other mushrooms. So let's go over some of these mushrooms that are much harder, if not impossible, to grow. First up is the chanterelle. This prized edible fruits in late summer and fall and is definitely a favorite among mushroom hunters. Chanterelles are of course mycorrhizal. There are a number of different species of chanterelle, but they are pretty easy to identify if you know what you're looking for. The chanterelle is usually yellow to golden, it has ridges instead of gills, and has a very distinct smell that's kind of reminiscent of apricots. You'll find chanterelles in semi-open areas with a lot of lichen, and if you look closely you can see them poking through the ground. If you see one chanterelle, be sure to look around because you're likely to see a whole bunch more. They do often grow in bunches. Next up is the porcini, otherwise known as Boletus edulis, or the King Bolete. In the Rocky Mountains, which is where I've done most of my foraging for porcini, the actual species name is Boletus ruberceps, although that distinction is not that important. Porcini can be found in all different shapes and sizes, from small little buttons to huge monsters. You'll find them in pine forests, often with their caps covered in ground cover or pine needles. Although there are lots of different species of bolete, the edible porcini are relatively easy to identify. They have pores instead of gills, they have a white bulbous stalk that is relatively smooth, and they have usually a red to brown cap. If you find the bigger ones, make sure you cut them in half and check for bugs, because quite often they can be bug eaten and no longer edible. Another honorable mention is the aspen bolete, which to the untrained eye might look really similar to porcini. The major difference is that it has a rough stalk and is sometimes referred to as a scaper stalk. Although this one is edible, it's not nearly as delicious as porcini and can give some people digestive issues. Next up, we have the lobster mushroom, or Hypomyces lactiflorum. Believe it or not, contrary to its name, lobster mushroom is actually not a mushroom. Hypomyces lactiflorum is a parasitic fungus that grows on other mushrooms, turning them into this reddish, brown, orange fruit body that resembles the skin of a lobster. It usually parasitizes lactarius and rushula mushrooms, making the original mushroom completely unidentifiable. Luckily, the end result is something that is much more delicious than the original mushroom ever could be. Lobster mushrooms are easy to identify and nothing else really looks quite like them. You can look for them in the forest or better yet at your local farmer's market in the summer and in the fall. Next up we have the hedgehog mushroom which is another mycorrhizal mushroom popular among foragers. You can look for these in the summer and fall in leafy matter and deciduous forests. Hedgehogs kind of look like a chanterelle but a quick look will reveal that under the cap they have teeth instead of gills or ridges which makes them immediately recognizable. Of course, if we're talking about valuable gourmet mushrooms, we can't overlook the truffle, another super unique mycorrhizal mushroom. Truffles grow underground at the base of trees, and there are lots of different species and lookalikes. 
Since they grow underground, they're really hard to find, which is why you may have heard of truffle pigs or truffle dogs that are actually trained to sniff them out and teach people where to dig for them. Truffles actually can be cultivated, although the process is much more complicated and time consuming than most other cultivated mushrooms. In general, this is done by inoculating the roots of saplings with truffle mycelium, eventually planting these trees and harvesting the truffles several years later. Finally, we have morels, which I did mention in the last video, but that is because morels are actually starting to be cultivated in parts of the world. The vast majority of morels in North America, however, are still wild harvested. Morels can be found in the period of a few short weeks in early spring, not long after the snow has melted. They're super easy to identify and a great mushroom for beginners. There are false morels, but they really don't look like true morels at all. I did a whole video on the difference between true morels and false morels, and if you're interested, you could check it out to learn more. Of course, there are lots of other non-cultivated gourmet mushrooms that I didn't cover here, so if I missed any of your favorites, be sure to let me know in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching. If you learned something new or enjoyed the video, feel free to hit that like button. And if you want to see more videos about mushrooms and mycology, feel free to subscribe. We'll see you in the next video.